Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Interim Provost Fred Herbst. I wanted to thank you for joining us uh, for this important remembrance ceremony of the events of 9-11-2001. Most of us remember where we were that day and how it affected us and those around us. I will never forget getting to campus, listening to the news reports on the radio, and joining my students in the classroom. We ended up listening to the events unfolding on the radio in silence and eventually leaving together when the college was closed. It's a day I will never forget, and the message that I hold on to is how this tragedy brought our country together. Next, I would like to introduce Reverend Lori Thornton, who proudly serves as pastor at Friendship Baptist Church in Corning, New York. She, she, she can also be found offering prayers at gatherings and other important events in the local community. Thank you, Reverend Thornton, for sharing your words of wisdom with us today. Good morning, everyone. And first of all, thank you for inviting me to participate. Um, it's always a privilege and an honor for me to be a part of these ceremonies. I want to share just a few words with you briefly this morning. It's been 19 years and it almost seems like yesterday, 19 years ago that this tragic event took place. It united our nation in a way that most had never seen before. It was a well-planned attack by an evil foreign enemy in a place that we call home. That attack was the catalyst that pulled every American into a spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood. Unfortunately, today that spirit of unity appears to be diminished by the civil unrest that we experience in our land. In the memory of the 9-11 victims and the civil unrest social injustice and racism, that's the backdrop to our lives today. I wanna to take just a few moments and talk to you about love, unconditional love. There is an English rock band called The Beatles. In 1967, they released a song called All You Need Is Love, and you young people will have to Google that or talk to your grandparents. The song says, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung. There's nothing you can say, but you can learn how to play the game. There's nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can save that can't be saved. All you need is love. And that message is so appropriate in 2020. You see, it's unfortunate, but we don't have to look very far or too long to find hatred. Hatred was the foundation for the attacks 19 years ago today on our country, and hatred sadly is still on display. But what's even more troublesome is that hatred is not from a foreign enemy. It's from within, within our own nation, states, cities, communities, and neighborhoods. However, I want to remind everyone about the power of love. It was love for our fellow man and our country that facilitated a collaboration of people from every race, every religion, every color, and every creed as they worked side by side, day after day, week after week, month after month, after 9-11, to rescue, to recover, to repair, and eventually restore our land. Love is a powerful four-letter word and it's not used enough today. Love can be such a motivator. You see, in the midst of chaos, love can bring peace. In the midst of darkness, love is a bright, bright light. In the midst of inequality, love is such a great equalizer. Love is not only a great offense, but it is an unfailing defense. Love is the companion to faith and hope. Love is the greater of the three of them. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had this to say about love. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. I believe that the unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. Please allow me to conclude this morning with the biblical definition of love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. 
It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and it endures through every circumstance. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. It is my prayer that your lives be filled with this unconditional love. Thank you and be blessed. Thank you, Pastor Thornton. Uh, we always appreciate you attending this event and sharing your, uh, your wonderful words of inspiration and love. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Mullaney and I serve as the president of SUNY Corning Community College. 9-11 uh, is a day of deep personal reflection for me as well. Um, I spent most of the original day uh, wondering if my best friend and the godfather to my son uh, had survived. Uh, he was working in Tower 2 that day, and I didn't find out until late into the evening that he had actually survived by walking down over 80 flights of stairs and out of the building onto a uh, boat that took them over to Hoboken. Um, I think about all the other fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, sisters, brothers, friends, partners who weren't as lucky on that day. Um, in thinking about today, I, I came upon two uh, ideas that I'd like to share with you. The first was that um, most of the students coming to our college today were born after 9-11. Um, and it just reiterated to me the fact of why ceremonies like this are so important, that we keep this event alive, that we keep um, uh, these reflections that we all have alive, that we translate, transfer those memories, these messages to, um, to young people who weren't around, who don't understand what it was like on, on that day. Um, the other thought that I had was that on this anniversary, we also find ourselves in the midst of another national crisis. Um, these are very different in nature, 9-11 um, uh, versus the COVID crisis, but they're both steeped in tragedy and involve the huge loss of human life. As in 9-11, um, what I'm seeing now is people are coming together. People are seeing that there is light at the end of the tunnel. That um, the United States is stronger than this. Is It's stronger than an enemy force. It's stronger than a disease. And we will get through this. Um, one of the greatest results, I think, of nine consequences, I think, of 9-11 was the creation of a national day of service that we took this day of sadness and turned it into something positive. So on this day across the nation, uh, people are dedicating time, energy uh, to others in need. Um, and, uh, you know, that is, you know, that is what America is about. That is what we are about as a people. Um, so uh, on this day, I often then think about uh, one of my favorite poems as a message of hope. And I'd like to conclude my remarks with the final uh, passages, uh, final stanzas of uh, Maya Angelou's poem on the pulse of mourning, uh, which uh, she recited at the inauguration of Bill Clinton. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. Here on the pulse of this fine day, you may have the courage to look up and out and upon me, the rock, the river, the tree, your country. No less to Midas than the mendicant, no less to you now than to the mastodon. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face, your country, and say simply, very simply, with hope, good morning. And now I'd like to 
lead us in a moment of silence. Thank you. And I will turn it over now to today's event organizer, uh, Ryan Steinberg. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for coming again today. Uh, uh, my thanks to Provost Herbst, Pastor Thornton, and um, uh, Ryan for, uh, for organizing today's event. I hope you have a nice day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye now.